Okay. Just introduce yourself again and let's okay. go from there. Well, my name is Jake Roba. I am the technical director for the haunted, uh, the haunted ship here on the William Mayer. It's a haunted attraction put on through the month of October. We fill the cargo holds with a maze. It's pretty cool. Um, so I'm here quite a bit on the Irvin, so I see quite a bit of uh, what happens around here. We're here a lot at night, sometimes even by ourselves. And uh, there's been many, many reportings of paranormal activity, and I've had some uh, experiences myself. So we're going to take you around some parts of the ship tonight, uh, some of the more sensitive parts. There was uh, a man that was killed during the ship's operation, so we're going to take you down and show you that area. Uh, that's closed to the public. The public does not go through there on the regular tour, so you're going to get a, a special little look at that. And uh, hopefully we'll find some good evidence for you guys, and uh, you can be the judge, uh, judge your own. But. Um, the ship was built in 1937. It was launched in 1938 in Lorraine, Ohio. Uh, it was decommissioned in 1978 and then was bought by the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center. And it's now parked in Canal Park as a tourist attraction which people come and tour from May to late September. So, uh, that's a little bit of history of the ship. Uh, the ship is 610 feet long, um, carried ore. It still holds one of the records for uh, being able to unload, I want to say it's around 13,000 tons of uh, ore in a set amount of time. I think it's about two hours. I'm not an actor tour guide, so I don't know all these things. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. So the boat now sits here, and uh, personally, I've had some experiences with uh, actually being touched, hearing voices, seeing doors closed. Uh, good friends of mine, former boss, the production manager here, reported seeing uh, apparitions and shadow figures. So it's uh, definitely uh, there's something going on here. Um, I, I don't know if I 100% believe it's paranormal yet, but I can't explain it. So that's why I'm hoping the Midwest Paranormal can help us out tonight and we'll figure out uh, just what exactly is going on here. So, well, it. So each one of these hatches here that covers the top of the cargo hold weighs about four and a half tons. So uh, you can imagine uh, this, this big white cross number you see right here is a device that we use to raise and lower the hatches. It runs on this train track line you see right here. And it would take about a half hour to get each lid on and off, but that's how they would reload the ship. Uh, the famous Edmund Fitzgerald that sank uh, reportedly sank because of uh, rough seas, I guess rough lakes, if you want to call it that, in the exterior. But uh, water got into the hatches and uh, it's, it's uh, actually flooded. So that's kind of the leading theory as to how that ship went down. Uh, but right now we're taking you into the back of the boat. Uh, this is the crew quarters and uh, kind of the engine room, boiler room area. This is uh, a lot of it's not seen by the public, like I said, so. Where are we at right now? Well, right now we're in the back of the boat, some of the crew quarters and crew cabins. Uh, down this hallway, uh, these are, all these doors you see are the crew cabins. Um, down here would be the, uh, the uh, maintenance offices and stuff like that, some of the administrative areas. Um, and then right in the central block right here is the big engine room. So uh, we'll, take you, we'll take you down this hallway and we'll show you some of the, the crew quarters on some of the cabins. Um, as you can see, most of them uh, would fit three to four per room. They're not very big. Um, I personally haven't had any experiences in here, but I have heard of people uh, talking about the beds moving, the, the mattresses bouncing up and down, as if someone was going in the bed and coming out of it. So uh, that's uh, some of those crew quarters. I also heard uh, uh, it's kind of on the uh, uh, residual haunting type of where footsteps were coming down this right. hallway at a certain time. I right. know one of the other maintenance men was saying. Right, and then this hallway also, whenever there was a distress call, an emergency call, all the men, there's a bell on the wall right next to, right over there, and there's an emergency, they have to ring the bell, and all the men would just bolt out of bed and start cooking down the hallway. Okay. So that could be some of that right there. This is the uh, crew dining. There's a big long wooden table right here. This would feed uh, most of the crew. Um, some of the... Uh, Reports of in here, some of the chair shufflings, you know, some footsteps. Uh, one report from one of the old maintenance guys is with laughter in here, because you know there's obviously a pretty fun place to be with all the crew. They're all good buddies and stuff. So uh, I see they've got a camera here set up ready to go. So yep, we've got a DVR infrared camera. Uh, we're going to be pretty much the whole view is of the whole table. Uh, and with the noises, I, I I know you've been out here for a, a long time with like. No mechanical noise, because I understand there isn't really any mechanical Right. Things well, the only on. thing on the ship that works in are called the MG, which are kind of the generators, okay. but those have to be flipped by switch in order to be turned on. But, okay. uh, you know, there's some of the noises you, you just can't really explain. Okay. Yeah, and that's why we have you here. If we hear noise, we'll ask, exactly. is this a normal noise? Or just not? like earlier, exactly. Yeah. 
and definitely, uh, as you can almost hear, it's really echoey in here. I mean, this is this whole place is it's just steel. steel. So, if there's going to be any noise, it's definitely going to emanate. I would right. imagine. So, so, so we'll take you back into here. This is uh, this is kind of the dish storage, dish washing area. Some of the coolers we have over here. Um, this is where kind of the food was put on the plates, ready to be served with the crew and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't personally heard any reports in here, but uh, it's pretty, you know, you, get, you kind of get the feeling whenever you're in here, you're kind of being watched and followed. So it's kind of uneasy. Now in here is a different story. There's been reports of, from one of the tour guides that she was doing a tour, came back to lock up, and every single one of these drawers had opened a little bit. And she, she was the last one through, so she hadn't seen that. Uh, but this is, this is the kitchen where all the food was uh, prepared and uh, cooked and everything. So you can see uh, we got the stoves here. And these stoves do still work. Uh, we actually had an incident when we were trying to lift some of the hatches. We had to lift, we had to turn the MGs on which are the generators again. And these ran off the MGs and someone had actually flipped the switch. Mm. And these things turned on and started smoking. So uh, we <laughs> had a little bit of a scare there. Just so you know, memorabilia from the ship. These are actual uh, real urban, those are actual real urban dishware over there. Uh, there's no replicas. It's all period appropriate. So this is, uh, this is just the kitchen area. And also, I uh, explain you know, some of the outdoor noise that we're going to get. Right. Of course, we can hear the music, right. but... Some of the outdoor noise you might hear might be water splashing up. Uh, if it is kind of windy in place, so you're going to hear we have like actual monster truck tires up against the side of the ship. You might hear those kind of squeaking around, but those are they're really distinct. Um, some of the cracks you might hear. Um, normally, when it's hot outside during the night, the boat will start to cool down and start to hear it tinking. But we're not going to hear that tonight because it's actually pretty cold up today. So if we see our hearing a lot of tinking, either there's a kid throwing rocks at the ship, which doesn't happen that much, or I don't know, you ask Brian what it is. <laughs> Again, so, hopefully we'll find out. Yeah. Exactly. So then in here, this was kind of the area, from my understanding, where the kitchen staff would eat. Uh, same kind of thing here, just a joyous place to be, liked place. So, And then we... Uh, and well, the whole design is kind of going into you, so we're going to take it out of the engine room now. This is, this is kind of, uh, now we're getting to the hot spots of the sensitive areas. So, And another thing about the engine room is you notice that the floors are not solid. Uh, you do see down to the, the lower level down there, which uh, it, when it's lit like this is <laughs> pretty creepy. <laughs> so uh, they have, there's cameras set up all around this, so if there's any activity, I'm sure you guys are going to catch it. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty pretty hot room, but uh, there was one shipmate who was killed during the ship's operation. Um, basically, what happened was, uh, well, you know, while we show, we'll, you know. yeah. so uh, welcome to the boiler room. This is the one part. Of, this is the, oh, there's only two parts in the ship where I woke up by myself, and this is the first one. Um, so basically, what happened? These are the boilers for the ship. These boil the uh, and kind of power the ship. So welcome back. Uh, right now we're in the, the boiler room. This is where the which is one of the shipmates was killed. The only shipmate uh, actually killed on the ship. Uh, what happened was these boilers, uh, they, this, the pipes go up and send the steam around. There was a leak in one of the pipes, so they cinched off that pipe, send, thus sending the, the steam to another pipe. Uh, they fixed the first pipe and then shut off the, red, the second pipe, not knowing they had not uncinched the first one. So essentially they made a pipe bomb. Uh, the pressure built up in the boiler and blew, and you can see how much force was exerted by this door by the fact that this latch right here put that big hole in uh, that piece right there. And this is, I, I'd say, the most the sensitive area of the entire ship. So, yeah, and there were two others uh, injured in scalded too as well. Right. So I. Uh, Definitely this, and again, this place is pretty, pretty massive. And just yeah. looking at it, like you said, it's like a labyrinth of rusted metal. Right. Uh, you Freddy Krueger fans, this is definitely where <laughs> yeah. he will, he would be residing in a, a perfect place like this. Uh, in in the, the boiler right here is just, it's a massive little area where, you know, maybe one of our investigators can maybe crawl in there. <laughs> I might be one of the... <laughs> ones that could actually fit, which so I might try or out. We'll see what happens. Uh, what we are going to do, we are uh, we're going to go lights out here soon uh, on the ship, especially down here in in the uh, boiler room. We will be sending down people very shortly. 
Maybe we're definitely going to be doing solos down here. Jake said he would do one. I said uh, I would go. <laughs> I said I would do one with someone, but not by myself. Yeah, and uh, but we uh, again, there are lots more of the ship that we will show you hopefully tonight if UStream is uh, working with us. Uh, if that wasn't a normal noise. That wasn't. That wasn't. Okay. That sounds like the normal noise. Yeah, it might be Jeremy and Brody. Someone. That's John. Okay. Okay. Uh, logical explanation. Logical explanation. But we will be uh, showing you some more of the the ship as our as, as our investigation goes on. Uh, we will be starting down here. There's also the uh, we, you know we took you through the through the cruise uh, uh, where they resided, where a lot of activity did happen there. So we so we're going to be going lights out here very shortly. What we're going to do? We're going to leave the live webcast camera down here in the boiler room area while we go upstairs and make our final plans and we'll be back down here shortly so Chris if you want to set up uh, a good angle around in this area here the chair I mean can we put a chair so somebody can sit in it maybe yeah that's what okay you want to grab that chair Jake you put them right where the man was standing yep. the died? Yep, that's exactly where I want it. That's unnatural. <laughs> that's why we're here. Oh boy. 